everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Janelle. Thank you for joining me. Today's video is a very exciting one. Um, I'm genuinely not sure. Well, I will be by the time I upload it, but not sure how lengthy of a video, how chatty it's going to get. So grab a cozy beverage. I am having some, a gingerbread latte. Very, you know, very apt for summertime, but <laughs> it's delicious. That's what I care about. Um, but what we're doing today, so I am as new as they come to Tolkien. And I really wanted to get into his works. I can't even begin to describe how much Tolkien means to like my whole family, and I feel like a lot of people could relate to that. The Hobbit is my grandma's all-time favorite book ever. Um, my it's my cousin, one of my cousins, one of her all-time favorite books. Same for my parents, um, my aunt and uncle, my husband. Like everybody loves this book, <laughs> and so I wanted to get into um, his universe, his world. And I didn't start with The Hobbit, so that's kind of what this video is about. There's a quartet you can get of four separate books that are not a part of the Lord of the Rings saga. And that is where I started with my Tolkien reading. And like I said, as much of a beginner as possible, I have seen The Hobbit movie. Yes, the extended edition. <laughs> I have seen The Hobbit movies. Um... But that's it. I, and I literally only saw it then, multiple parts, whatever, for the first time a few months ago. Uh, so I'm taking this from, here's my thoughts on these four books, um, where I would recommend starting, what I feel like the pros and cons were, how overall I feel, um, and yeah, so on and so forth. So let's dive right in. Let me see. So first of all, the box set that they come in looks like this. So this is done by the publishers Harper Collins. Um, they, they're gorgeous. They, ah, I love this box set so much. I'm not, you know what? I'm, I'm all here for honesty, you know. And <laughs> the main reason I asked for this is because I thought it was really cute. Um, <laughs> I thought it was absolutely adorable, and the thought of like going into the whole Lord of the Rings saga <laughs> series a little intimidating a little bit intimidating whereas these I was like this is bite size so I figured this is going to give me a good taste and a good idea if I even like his writing at all you know before diving deep into a big big fandom you know so there are four books here there's the adventures of Tom Bombadil, Rove Random, Farmer Giles of Ham and Smith of Wooden Major. Now Let's start with the aesthetics. These are all hardcovers. You can get them in different editions, but from what I can tell, just looking it up online, I think these are the most like easily available. You can also get them individually, but I think it's more commonly in the box set. But I'll have them linked below. Um, so on this side, we see the illustration for the cover art of Tom Bombadil, and on this side, it's Smith of Wood Major, and on here, it's Farmer Giles of Ham. And we don't have Rove Random. Yeah, no, nothing for Rove Random. Oh, oh, there it is. Rove Random. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so I do, I love the box set. I have a bit of a, a love and hate with box sets because sometimes I feel like you almost have to wreck the books to get them out. But because this is like a half, like it's got that slant to it, they're so nice to get in and out. And you know what? Not all might care about that aesthetic, but I do. <laughs> so like, it matters to me. So I'm going to talk about them in order that I read them. Hold on. Organizing now? Yeah, it went like that. Okay. <laughs> Which way did I read them? I have done individual reviews for them, and I will link those as well below. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So, the first one that I read is Rove Random. Now, I've mentioned my cousin, my younger cousin. She absolutely loves The Hobbit and the whole Lord of the Rings, um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy series, but out of all of Tolkien's writing, Rove Random is her favorite, so I chose to go with this one first. This one, out of all of them, 
I can picture myself reading to my kids really, really, really well. So I'll give a brief synopsis for all of them. What I liked, what I didn't like, if anything, and, you know, what I rated them as well. Uh, so basically, Roverandom, the story came about by t one of Tolkien's sons losing his toy dog. And he made up a story to explain how it couldn't be found. So you see this dog, Rover, Roverandom, go on his adventure. And we get taken along for the ride. It's extremely cute. It You can tell, like, it is written for kids, but... I think all ages really could get enjoyment from it. Um, it has very unique scenery <laughs> out of all of them. Yeah, out of all of them, this one definitely has like the most unique environment and scenery and atmosphere, definitely. Um, yeah. <laughs> you just need to read it. I did. I really love this one. I flew through it and it was immediately really special to me because it was the first of Tolkien's works I've ever read. So um, yeah, I quite liked that one. Then the next one I read was Smith of Wooden Major. Um, so this is based on, it's a bit of a fairy themed story and it's based on this great cake that is made very very rarely and typically the bakers only make it like once within their baking career um and how magic is involved and the fairy world is involved this is extremely short roverandom is this length right this one is 50 pages not this length so it really the whole rest of the book is just this big commentary on the book itself which honestly and this is I think really like specific to per person that's not what I was there for I was there for the story that was it um I guess the commentary is interesting and I would probably go back to it but no, I, I just wanted to be there for the story and just read it how it originally was and appreciate it for just what it is. Um, so this one, this one was there. It was well written. Um, I'm not that into the whole fairy side of things. I used to be. It's just not my cup of tea anymore. Um, it was well, it was well written, but I did feel it was really, really short. Like it was too short almost in, in a way. Okay, next is Farmer Giles of Ham, and I think out of all of Tolkien's writing that I read, this is the one that, like, matched what I pictured it would be like the most. Yeah, so this is about Farmer Giles of Ham, or, hold on, he has the best name ever. Um, let me bring it up here. I, I love it. I love it because Rove Random has like interesting names. This this beats it to me. Aegidius Hannibarbarus, Julius Agricola de Hamno. Like, I also probably still said that wrong, but I was like, that's so much better than Farmer Giles. <laughs> so Farmer Giles is the abbreviated name, but it's about this farmer that no one really wants to mess with in the first place. Um, and he has a <laughs> dog for a pet. <laughs> the dog is quite the character. Um, so he has a dog for a pet, and basically there's an instance with a giant where it's a lot of it's a lot of right place, right time, or wrong place, wrong time, depending how you're looking at it. Um, but he ends up really making a name for himself. He ends up really making a name for himself. I absolutely love the dragon character. I, I really just adored how Tolkien wrote him. Um, one thing in general that I saw come through in like all of Tolkien's books, I had no idea how humorous of a writer he was. Couldn't have, would never have guessed that. But I was giggling through all of the books. This one is, I think it's shorter than Rover Random as well, but definitely longer than um, Smith of Wood and Major. So it's kind of in the middle mark, if I remember correctly. Now the fourth and final that I read was The Adventures of Tom Bombadil. This one was the most dramatically different to what I expected. So that was an, a really interesting one to finish on. I saved it to last because honestly the illustrations I love like if I could have a print 
of this illustration, I, I would. I love anything to do with like the sea and water and I just, I adore it. So it was really the illustrations gave me such a good feeling about it and Tom Bombadil is, I, I knew he was a character within the Lord of the Rings um, world. And so this is the only one that is set in Middle Earth. So the other ones are all set within their own place, time, and everything in between. So uh, I say this one to last because I had a feeling it would be my favorite. So bear with me and we're going to find out. Now, out of all of them, what were my ratings? These three, nope, hold on, I was about to lie, oh no. Uh, <laughs> These two, I gave four and a half stars to. I really, really, really enjoyed them. Just wasn't quite five star. Between a four and a five star for me is really an emotional thing. It's how does it hit me. This one I feel like over time could turn into a five star just because of nostalgic level. Just because of nostalgia. When I start reading it to my kids and everything like that, it'll probably become a five. This one's probably just going to live its life at a four and a half because it was so, so good. But it just wasn't quite there. And then... Farmer Giles of Ham. Farmer Giles of Ham? I'm doing so good. <laughs> I'm doing great. It's not even that late. Um, the Adventures of Tom Bombadil. I gave a five and a half. Five and a half? Wow. I'm just going to leave this all in here. I gave it a five stars. <laughs> a five star. Wow. I can speak. I can read. I just can't right now. But I gave The Adventures of Tom Bombadil five stars, and yeah, I loved it. Then, Smith of Witten Major, I gave four stars to. Thinking about it now, and it's a couple months after I've read it, in my head it hits more as a three, three and a half, so I'll probably change it to that, being completely honest and transparent. It just wasn't fully my cup of tea. I didn't dislike it, but it was like, all right. <laughs> That, that that happened. It was written really well, and I can totally see why some people would love it. But even though it wasn't, the storyline wasn't my favorite, I almost feel like I would have enjoyed it more if there was more to it. Like, I felt like it needed more sustenance. It needed to be longer. It needed to just have a little bit more going for it. What I really like about all of them is they all have uh, black and white illustrations throughout. And they all at the end have like a glossary of, or a gallery of the illustrations kind of like redone and retouched up, just able to be in more detail than how they were originally done um, by the same artist, I believe. So that's really, really cool. Now, between these three, this one I feel like is really hard to compare to the other ones for the reason the other three are written in prose and this one is written in poetry so that's very interesting to me i had no idea tolkien had that up his sleeve but there it was the cool thing about tom the adventures of tom bombadil is that i found it actually after i read it is tolkien um wrote it as if it had been written by hobbits which is kind of a good little scapegoat if it was said the poetry was bad or anything like that. It was it was the hobbits who did it. Um, so that's really cool. I didn't read the introduction. I didn't read the intros to any of these because I find with books that have been published a while, the introductions tend to give stuff away. They tend to be a bit of a spoiler. Now, overall, I kind of have varying opinions on which one to start with. I definitely, personally, wouldn't start with... Um, Smith of Wooden Major. And it is a good one. It's not a bad story. It's just definitely not my favorite out of them all. Like, easily not my favorite, you know? Um, Roverandom was really, really cool. It was very random, though. So I'm gonna kind of pros and cons here. It was really cool, very random, super random, but that's a 100% part of its charm. You know, that is the charm of this story. So this one, I think was funny. This one um, had a really good um, like moral story to it. Definitely did. And I th like if you're looking for like a really descriptive setting, this one. Start with this one. It's fantastic that way. Then Farmer Giles of Ham. This is very like what in my head I would think would be like typical, you know, 
fantasy. Yeah, like stereotypical classic fantasy. So if that's really what you're going for, this, like it's, you know, it's dragons, it's knights, it's, you know, like what, what more could you want? Um, this one is extremely straightforward. I really noticed the difference between this one and Rogue Random. Um, this one follows a very like linear, like it, it really, like you're here, then this happens and that is next and you go from there to there to there to there. It is very like concisely done, um, which I do like. So if if the random style is not really for you, start with this one because it does all go really in order. You're not left questioning what's happening or where you are or what was that or what just happened. You're, it's very clear. It's extremely clear the whole way through. Um, Tom Bombadil, I wouldn't necessarily say start with first. Personally, I would do one of these two first, even though this one was my favorite. Um, just because f overall from my understanding, could be totally wrong, but <laughs> overall from my understanding, the majority if not all the rest of Tolkien's work is in uh, prose and not poetry. So it's written in the novel style and not as poems. So to get an accurate idea of how you like his writing, those two would be, to me, I would think, more accurate. Um, however, if let's say you don't have a lot of time to really sit down and read all at once and you've got other things you want to read and you know this, that, and the next thing, that is when I would say read this one first because you can read a poem and come back to it. You're not, they don't merge together. They're each their own little short story and I think it's a nice thing to take a little bite out of and come back. I do highly recommend reading this out loud. I didn't for the first half but I did the second half and it was so fun. This is really really, um, it's just fantastic read out loud and honestly I had an absolute blast with it. My, I did have some favorites in it. Um, there's all in all, how many are there? 13? No, more than that. 16. There's 16 poems in here. And I'd say probably, like, one for sure was really unique to me. Um, and I didn't expect it. And there was probably another three or four that I really, really loved, but I get into that in my review. Um, just because this one is poetry and it's a lot of different stories. That's the only reason I'm saying maybe don't start with this one. It wouldn't be detrimental if you did, but just because the rest of his writing more or less from what I know would be prose, to me then it makes a bit more sense to start with one of the other two. Um, but again, if you're looking just to take little bites, this is the one to chew. It's great. <laughs> um, I, it, I was giggling. I really love, there was so, this, this one really shows the, a great wheel of the different settings this he can conjure and locations and and creatures and characters and it's just it really it, it was him just having a blast really is what I felt um, I, I was giggling constantly so yeah out of these two my favorites were random my favorites definitely were random just because yes this one wasn't random and this one followed a very clear path and it was great and it was funny and it was endearing this one the randomness was was really the charm of it and I especially loved the second half you know my cousin loved the first half the basically the settings change dramatically and I preferred the second half but it's yeah it's just it's so insanely unique you'll never have read anything like it at the same time, reading this did make me be like, okay, yeah, you could totally tell Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were friends. Like, just the the world description and everything, I'm like, yeah, okay, I totally see this. And I adore C.S. Lewis, so it really, it really got me into it. So even though it is a bit more random and quirky, I kind of lean into saying read this one first just because... Because it really, it shows just how insanely amazing he is at world building. Like, 
this obviously has some world building as well. Like there's a dragon and everything. But this one, you're like, wait, what? Like, what is that? Like, it is, it's nothing like you've ever read about or seen before. So, yeah, that's kind of, that's what I think. So I had done the goal where I read one each month which was hard. Some months I literally just was so in the mood for them. I just wanted to read them all, but I knew there would be a point when I was done them and I wouldn't want to be, and that would be sad. So <laughs> I spaced them out one a month and I started in, did I start in January? Can I even count? Um, no, I didn't. I started in February. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I read Rover Random in February. Then I read um, Smith of Wood Major in March. Farmer Goddess of Ham in April, and now Tom Bombadil in May. And then, as well, to note about the adventures of Tom Bombadil, not all the poems are about him. Very few are actually about Tom Bombadil, so keep that in mind. Um, and then the idea, the idea is in June to read or start The Hobbit which now I am so excited and ready for. I have had to resist picking it up because I've set out this thing. I'm just, I'm hyper aware that when you experience something for the first time, you only experience it for the first time once. So I want to draw out this experience to just have a lot of amazing consistently happening. So yeah, there is a fifth one from my understanding called Leaf of Niggle. It's not printed in these editions. I'm having a, quite a problem finding it, and which is unfortunate because it sounds like something I would adore. It sounds like one I would just absolutely love. I hope that was a bit insightful. I'm so into it. My coffee's gone cold. I forgot to actually drink it. So I hope you didn't. I hope you had a snack and a nice beverage. But let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or if you've read any of them um and if so what was your favorite i just i would love to chat about all of them they've all become like very near and dear and as predicted i'm so sad that like i've read them all now <laughs> in a way i'm happy i have but i am sad that i have so yeah like I said, I will have the additions linked in the description below as well as the individual reviews for all of them. So yeah, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.